The Kenai Peninsula is known for the Kenai River, which is the most productive salmon fishery on the road system in Alaska. Every year, millions of salmon return to the Kenai, making the Kenai River the most popular destination for fishing in all of Alaska. There are three different fisheries that compete for the salmon that come to the Kenai Peninsula, commercial, subsistence, and sport. During the months of June and July, these sockeye salmon that return to the Kenai and Kasilof rivers head up Cook Inlet to return to their native spawning grounds. At 7 a.m. on a Thursday morning, these set net fishermen head out to set their nets for their regularly scheduled opener. They've been fishing these waters every year since before Alaska was even a state. Most of the people who fish commercially in Cook Inlet have been doing so for generations. They learn from their fathers and grandfathers and are now teaching their kids to do the same. Much of the history and traditions of the communities on the Kenai Peninsula rely on the commercial fishing industry and they are a valuable part of the state of Alaska. Also, the Department of Fish and Game relies on commercial fishermen to control the flow of salmon into the rivers. If too many salmon enter the river in a given year, they will produce more young than the river can sustain. This causes a crash in the population of salmon and returns for years to come. Commercial fishing is the most effective way to stop this from happening and maintaining strong runs in the future. So if you are participating in the sport or subsistence fisheries on the Kenai Peninsula, remember that these guys are an integral part of keeping the runs to the Kenai River strong and healthy. It's not just sockeye salmon that return to the Kenai. King salmon, pink salmon, and silver salmon return as well, and this makes managing the runs that much more difficult. For the last few years, the king salmon have not been returning to the Kenai in the numbers that they historically have. This affects the commercial fishermen in Cook Inlet because in an effort to protect the king salmon runs, the Alaska Department of Fish and Game restricts the commercial fishermen when the sockeye returns are strong. This can also affect the future returns of sockeye to the Kenai River, causing the river to be over escaped. Most people know that commercial fishing is hard work and can be at times very dangerous, but what most people assume is that commercial fishermen make money every year, and that's just not true. It's a risky line of work and some years, the fish just might not be there when you're open. As you can see, all they have is jellyfish this day. But the potential for a good year and the love of the ocean and the culture that surrounds commercial fishing keeps them coming back, even in the bad years. Because of the political pressure for other user groups to have more access to the fish, the future is somewhat uncertain for commercial fishermen in Cook Inlet. However, they are an important part of the Kenai Peninsula culture and it'd be a shame to lose them. Moving up to the river mouths of the Kenai and Kasilof rivers, the next group is the subsistence fishermen. They're managed under the personal use fishery and use dip nets to harvest their sockeye salmon. This fishery has been growing in popularity and is a great way to fill your freezer, but it's only available to Alaskan residents. The Kenai River is the most popular river for dip netting because the salmon are larger and they return in very strong numbers. Here at the mouth of the Kasilof, the crowds are less than the Kenai, but the fish are smaller. Many Alaskans prefer to harvest their fish in this manner because it's easier than sport fishing and takes less skill. Also, they are given an annual limit which helps them get their salmon in a shorter amount of time. 
Dip netting is fun and exciting when the fish are in. However, the river mouths have a lot of mud and it can be a real mess to get your fish out of the water. This is why some people prefer using boats for dip netting. However, the shore fishing is productive and our kids absolutely loved it. Many of the people that participate in the personal use fishery are from Anchorage and some of the larger cities in Alaska. However, this gives them a share in the resource and that's why the state of Alaska thinks it's an important fishery to maintain. Oh, yeah. Yay! Good Luke, good. Okay, let's get that fish out of there. Dip netting helps young Alaskans and new Alaskans alike take part in a valuable resource that is such an integral part of what our state is. It also gives many Alaskans the opportunity to participate in a more traditional lifestyle by being able to harvest their own salmon. If you're a dip netter or you're thinking about taking dip netting up as a way to get your fish, Think about the other user groups on the river, the sport fishermen and the commercial fishermen, and be a good steward of the river mouths, keeping them clean of trash and disposing of your fish carcasses properly so we can preserve this tradition for years to come. Keep on up high where it's clean. Got to make sure you get the tails cut on them and get a count for a permit. So really we're just ready for dinner. of fishermen, but it's certainly not the least important, is the sport fishermen on the Kenai River. People from all over the world come to the Kenai River to take part in sport fishing for some of the largest salmon in the world. The Kenai River boasts a state record for king salmon, sockeye salmon, and pink salmon, as well as holding some monster-sized silver salmon. Not to mention, on a good sockeye return, the limits are often six fish per day and can be raised even higher. This allows sport fishermen to fill their freezers quickly as well. Sometimes the fishing can be so hot that even a novice fisherman can catch their limit of sockeye salmon in just a couple hours. Our boys found this out on a recent trip to the Russian River confluence that the fishing was very, very exceptional. They managed to catch both their limits in just a couple of hours. Because of this reputation, the Kenai River is often very crowded and is renowned for its combat fishing as well. On this trip, we were able to find a spot with a few less people and find a spot that our kids could actually be able to fish. But often the Russian River confluence area has shoulder to shoulder fishing. Wow, sister. Wait, 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 Luke. Wow, sis. What do you say? <laughs> Bethany, who was only seven on this trip, was able to catch her first sockeye, although 
One sockeye salmon was enough for her. They're renowned for their fighting ability and their ab ability to run down the river and just strip out line and snap lines and break rods. Sport fishing is one of the most important aspects to the Kenai Peninsula economy. It brings in the largest share of revenue from people coming in from all over the world and all over the state to catch some of the renowned Kenai salmon. If you ever get a chance to get down to the Kenai Peninsula and sport fish, we highly recommend it as a place to try. Even if you don't have the luck that we had on this day fishing, there's always lots of fish in the Kenai River to try to catch. That's why they say a bad day fishing here beats a good day at work. So if you get your chance, come down to the peninsula and see what it has to offer. The future of our salmon runs on the Kenai Peninsula depends on all three groups of fishermen working together commercial, subsistence, and sport. They all have their place in the culture there. With all the fishing that goes on in the Kenai River and on the Kenai Peninsula, it's amazing that any of these salmon make it through. But every year they do, and with proper management and good returns, every year we should see returns that continue on for generations to come.